Hello friends, I'm your host, Dr. Dave Layton, and thank you for joining me in our journey to hope. It is my desire through this podcast to bring you information about how to discover, sustain, or perhaps regain hope. Since this is the inaugural episode, please allow me to speak briefly about what this podcast is about and what I hope you will gain from it. We will look at a mix of spiritual insights and secular, or perhaps you would call it practical topics, to help in discovering, sustaining, and maybe even rediscovering hope. Sometimes it will be my thoughts on what I've learned. At times, I'll bring in others to discuss specific topics for which they have insights into and are willing to share. My desire is that if you are struggling with hope, for whatever reason, then together we can journey to hope. If you have hope in your life, then we certainly praise God for that, and we want to help you strengthen your hope even more. Well, in this first episode, we will look at a couple of views about what hope is and why it's important. One more thing before I get started. I'm a cancer survivor, and I learned a great deal about hope as I journeyed to recovery. Although I was not without hope in my situation, I did experience fear and doubt. I'll speak more to that and how I overcame it later. You know, I thought I knew a lot about hope, but soon found out that there was much more that I needed to learn and experience. And praise God, I did learn. And so now I want to share with you as we journey together to hope. I want to share with you some of my ideas, some of my insights, and as I said, from time to time, we'll bring in others because none of us are alone in our journey to hope. And I think it's important that you can hear from me and from others what they experienced and how they grew in hope. And from it, you can identify with those situations and you too can find hope. You too can grow in hope. Well, let's begin now by defining what hope is. You know, there's a lot of words that have different meanings. Or perhaps uh, they're understood differently by different people. It's often based on what's going on in our life or what our experiences are, perhaps even in the moment. Well, the word hope is like that. It has different meanings to different people. But it's certainly something that all of us need. It really and truly, it's part of life itself when you think about it. And it certainly impacts our quality of life. So what I'd like to do in this episode is to explore some of the definitions of hope. I'll, I'll be looking at it from two different perspectives. So let's talk about that. First of all, let's just define the word. <clears throat> the basic definition of hope is it's a desire and it's accompanied by some kind of expectation, some kind of belief that that hope is going to be fulfilled. Well, that's a textbook or dictionary definition. And a key point to that, of course, is that there's an expectation that it's going to be filled. We all have desires and expectation, but the degree to which they are or we will be filled, that's the key to hope. Well, hope is one of the most powerful concepts in life, and really and truly it is at the heart of what we learn in the Bible. Hope helps provide motivation, uh, maybe some kind of motivation to begin something or to continue during some of the challenges that we face in life. Interesting thing about hope is it kind of blends our experiences, our expectations, and even our current situation to develop a view of the future. Now that view is going to be positive or negative depending quite honestly on how we view our world and how we view our life. Now there's some additional words that use that root word hope. One of them is hopeless. Hopeless means there is little to no expectation of something good or success in something. We use the expression, it's a hopeless situation or a helpless 
situation. Someone once said that hopelessness makes it impossible to care. So we want to avoid hopeless. That's such a powerful word from a negative perspective. It impacts us so severely. Now, another word for uh, that, that is based on the root word hope is the word hopeful. Well, we like that word. Uh, th- this word is actually made of two words, hope and full. And that word, f- that suffix full, F-U-L, actually means a measure of quality. If you are hopeful, then you have a level of expectation that something you want to happen is going to happen. Uh, The more hopeful we are, the greater the expectation. Um, Interestingly, however, there remains a sense of doubt, even in that word hopeful. Being hopeful is not always the same as being full of hope. I'm hopeful that such and such will happen, or maybe hopeful something will not happen. And so there's, there's a little bit of an element of doubt in that expression. Well, that's a basic understanding of the word hope. Uh, I'd, I'd kind of like to take a look at that word hope now from two views. Uh, I'll call one view the world's view, and the other a Christian view or a view of someone who is a child of God. Now, although related, they are different because of their foundation and the expectation. So let's look at two views of hope. Uh, Again, the world's view or an earthly view. This is one we all share. Uh, There's nothing inherently wrong with it. Uh, This particular view of hope seeks uh, or sees hope, excuse me, as a kind of a vague desire for something almost wishful thinking. It's a feeling of, well, maybe so, or I think so. Remember I said there's a level of doubt even in the word hopeful, so again, that's kind of a worldly view or an earthly view of it. It expresses a level of doubt. Interestingly, too, this word, uh, this this view, excuse me, of hope, this it, it can be risky. It can be easily lost. If something doesn't go as we had hoped for, Uh, there may be even a sense of desperation, as someone might say, this is my only hope. We frequently will look at our current life situation and we'll gauge the level of hope that we have. In other words, what's going on in my life right now? One moment, we have the things we need in life. Our relationships are stable. Life is great. I've got good health. I have a positive outlook on things. But that view of hope can be fragile. And it's generally short term. And it's often associated with immediate gratification. In fact, it may cause us to be a little bit blind to the reality of what's going around where we are. Now, I want to emphasize There's nothing necessarily wrong with that view and and many of our hopes. Uh, But these generally point to this life, and it's not an eternal view. But again, there's nothing wrong with that. That's what we all share in common. We want things in this life. We like to enjoy things in this life. and, And certainly we like to have a life that's full of hope that the future of our life will we'll be what we want it to be. So that's one view, the world or the earthly view. Again, nothing necessarily wrong with that. Now the other view about hope that I want to talk about is, is the Christian's view or the view of somebody that is a child of God. Now, a maturing Christian, and I use that word maturing because it's an ongoing process. We don't hit a level of maturity and then that's it. We coast on from there. Spiritual maturity is an ongoing process. It's something we grow towards. And in our lifetime, we will never fully achieve spiritual maturity. But as we grow and develop, as we uh, understand and 
internalize, make a part of our life, the teachings of our Lord, then we will grow spiritually. So a, a maturing Christian or a maturing child of God should see hope as, I know so, or I am sure of. But remember, we grow to that. We're not going to realize that immediately. Remember, the other view, that worldly view, is one of maybe so and I think so. It has an element of doubt. But as we mature as children of God, we have the idea of, I know so, I'm sure of. And that's very closely tied not only to our spiritual maturity, but our level of faith. It is very much based on our knowledge also of God's faithfulness. Uh, we point to the evidence from God's word. We see the evidence of life in people around us. And, and even if it's not personally experienced, we can see it in others and begin to understand what that is. And that view of hope is one that we also want to offer to the world. Now, as we grow spiritually, we develop greater confidence in what God promises. And that confidence is gained through our own knowledge and experience as well as, again, what we see in others around us. You know, the Apostle Paul wrote most of the New Testament, and he had a lot to say about hope. And he had a lot to say about things that showed hope and helped teach us about hope. I want to go to one particular scripture uh, in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 through 8. Paul's approaching the end of his life, and he makes a wonderful, truly hopeful statement in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. He said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. I really like that ending that that. Paul puts in that statement, not only to me, you know, Paul was a super saint, had that direct encounter with our Lord Jesus Christ. And yet he says, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. What Paul's doing there is he's transferring his insights about hope to us. So it's a very, very um, hope-filled passage of scripture. Uh, there's a lot that we find in Scripture about hope. Uh, God promises salvation through grace and faith, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. We learn about true love, and because of and through all of this, we find hope. Hope is a thread that runs through everything, faith, hope, and love. Remember in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 13? Paul says in that letter that uh, there remains now faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these, he says, is love. But faith, hope, and love, the three of those, they, they form a kind of a triad of spiritual blessings. Uh, these three are ever-present in a maturing Christian's life as we grow and mature. They, they also grow as we mature, these three things. Uh, the view of hope, that particular view of hope, should ignite a desire to continue to know, or excuse me, to continue to a known future. And that known future is sustained by our relationship with our Heavenly Father. I, I want to cover a few examples from Scripture about hope. And, and as you're looking at these, uh, kind of think about key words in each of these. In Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 and 29, our Lord Jesus Christ offers us a wonderful and personal invitation to bring our concerns to Him. And, and when we learn to do so, we also will learn of the assurance of hopefulness because of our Lord's loving invitation. So let me read that. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 and 29. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you 
will find rest for your souls. That's such a comforting passage because a lot of times when we're dealing with feelings of hopelessness, we feel like we're all alone. Well, friends, we're never alone. We never take our journey to hope by ourselves. And so Jesus says, come to me. Let me carry a burden. And in the middle of that passage, he makes a statement, and learn from me. The more we learn and apply the principles our Lord teaches, the more we grow in that relationship with him, the greater our comfort and the greater our hope. Let me read a second passage. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 and 10. 2 Corinthians 12, verses 9 and 10. You're probably familiar with this. This is when Paul was dealing with something we're not sure what it was, but Paul describes it as a thorn in the flesh. And so he's praying to God to remove it, has prayed to God several times to remove it. But the answer to that prayer was no. And then God gives him a reason. He says that God will be glorified. Well, you know, all of us have thorns in the flesh in this life. And some of these thorns in the flesh, some of these storms in our life, they they seem to rob us of hope. And like Paul, we should not only continue to hold fast to our hope, but we should seek to glorify God through our trials as we see his power working in our life. So again, let me read 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 and 10. Paul says, in answer, talking about God's answer to him, Paul says, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast, Paul says, therefore I will boast all the more gladly of, uh, of my weakness so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. That's an interesting paradox. But again, remember, he's relying on our Lord. Let me read another one. Philippians Chapter 4, verses 6 through 9. In this particular passage, Paul was teaching Christians about their cares and concerns in this life. And he's encouraging them by reminding them of the peace and hope we have in Christ. Let me read Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 9. Paul says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, Whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is any anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. You know, when we're in those deep, dark moments, when we feel like hope is just not there, we feel lonely. And we feel a terrible weight pressing down upon us in that darkness. And we sometimes imagine things, or we sometimes look at something from such a negative view. And it just seems to put us into a downward spiral that we don't know how to come out of. And so Paul is saying, whatever is uh, true, whatever is honorable, just, pure, lovely, commendable, If there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about those things. So chase away those deep, dark thoughts that seem to rob us of hope and look for the good things. Let me read one more. Well, actually, I have three more that I'm going to read, but I want to read this next one. 1 John chapter 1, verses 7 through 9. Friends, I praise God every day for 1 John chapter 1. I love that particular passage because there's so many times when we're weak and we fail. We do not live up to the commitment we made to God. We sin. And yet, 
1 John chapter 1 tells us that God will receive us back. So the hope that we gained by becoming a child of God is not lost. Let me read John chapter 1, verses 7 through 9. John says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say uh, we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Doesn't that sound a lot like us? The standard is there for walking in the light. We have fellowship with our Lord and with each other, but again, we know we sin. And so sin is out there, and it destroys that relationship with Jesus and with others. But here's the wonderful, hope-filled part. John goes on to say, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I love that passage because I do sin. I have my moments of weakness as we all have. And when we come to the reality of that and we confess that to our Lord, well then, friends, our Lord is waiting there for us. So John's telling us that God has promised to forgive our sins if we repent and stay faithful. This gives us confidence in God's forgiving nature. And because of this promise, we can have hope of an eternal future with our Lord Jesus Christ. All right, two more passages. The next passage is also in 1 John. It's 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. John says, And this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests that we have asked of him. Now in this passage, John is using the word confidence as he describes that we can approach God and that he will hear us. Note the phrase, according to his will. When we approach God as he wishes, then he hears and answers. So again, that is a hope-filled situation because so many times when we're in a hopeless or something that seems to be a hopeless situation, we will turn to God. We will pray. And I'm going to speak to that later in other episodes, uh, but I want to jump ahead real quick and make a statement. Whenever God makes a promise, he's faithful to that promise. We see that in the evidence of Scripture, we see that in the lives of other people. We see it in our lives if we're attuned to it. But I want to make something perfectly clear here. When God made or makes the promises throughout Scripture, God makes promises about answering prayer. Those promises are made to His children. Now, in the Old Testament, His children were the people of Israel. In the New Testament, it's those people who are in Christ. And so don't be surprised if when you pray, the first answer to that prayer is become my child. And God will make that happen uh, through bringing someone into your life that will help you understand what it means to be a child of God and how to become a child of God. Now, if God chooses to answer someone's prayer, well, then praise God for his grace and mercy and the love he has for us. But again, don't be surprised if that first answer to the prayer is become my child. And then all the promises are there. And the fulfillment of those promises is there. I'm going to talk about that, as I said, in a later episode. And I'm going to explain what that means and, in fact, how we can become a child of God. When we do, the hope that we're seeking, the true hope, there it is. And so 1 John chapter 5, 14 and 15, he's talking about we can approach him in confidence according to his will. And his will is that we do become a child of God. All right, one more passage. 1 Peter chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Peter is praising God because of the hope we have and how it leads to eternal life. Let me read it. 
Peter says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his great mercy. He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. I want to touch on that last statement there, kept in heaven for you. Isn't it interesting? Our our salvation is kept in heaven for us. That means God is guarding it for us. It, it, It means, in essence, that God is serving us, those of us that are his children. So, again, Peter says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, that, that, uh, that hope is there. He says it's imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. It will be there forever. It is eternal. So again, Peter praises God because of that hope. Well, friends, let me wrap up. Let me talk about just for a few minutes that hope is a critical element of life, both in our current situation and on into eternity. The world sees hope as, I think so, or maybe so. Again, nothing wrong with that. But if that's all you have, well, that's limited to this life only. And we want eternal hope. We want to go beyond this life. Uh, Christians see hope as, I know so. I'm sure of. And that's not some kind of a, a boastful or haughty position. In fact, when we realize that and we realize the love that God has for us, it drives us to our knees. It, it builds in us even greater humility. Now, the difference between the world's view and, and uh, the, the uh, child of God's view is based on our understanding that God is faithful to his promises. And in a world so full of uncertainty, Hope given by our Lord shines like a ray of light through the darkness of this world. And in fact, the world, if that's all they have, offers a counterfeit hope. It's not true hope. Only our Lord offers true and faithful hope. And it's interesting, those of us that are children of God, we are in the hope business because it's through us, our teaching, the life example that we try to live, we do fail, but we try to live a faithful life. Uh, it's, it's through that that we present that light of hope to the world. All right, well, it's, it's my desire that you'll take this information and uh, it, it, it will begin to build in you a desire to learn more about hope. How do I find hope? How do I uh, sustain hope? What is true hope, and how can I obtain that? I'm, I'm hoping that you, you will begin to have that in your life. And then I, I, I really, truly hope that you'll seek out the answers from God's Word. You'll seek out the answers from those people who have dedicated their life to our Lord. Now, in the next lesson... In this next episode, excuse me, we're going to be talking about uh, stages of our journey to hope. We're going to talk about how uh, if we're coming from a situation where there's very little hope or maybe not even um, hope that we would recognize, uh, how we can begin to build uh, hope and how we perhaps can even restore hope. Well, friends, if you would please, I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe to this channel. Uh, I look forward to offering even more opportunities. And if possible, um, I'd like to hear from you. Um, If you could email me with your thoughts and maybe some of the challenges that you're facing, uh, my email is ourjourneytohope at gmail.com. Now, let me explain that email address. It's our journey and then the number two hope. Our journey to hope at gmail.com. Well, thank you for listening. I so appreciate you. It's just such a joy to be able to express hope and to be able to help people build hope. And until next time, 
I look forward to talking to you. Bye-bye.